Oh, hi there. I'm Alex, a data engineer and product developer. Today, we're talking about my keyboard. This is my workstation, and this is my keyboard. It's called the Moonlander, and it has an ortholinear layout which means that the keys are directly above each other. Other ergonomic features of this keyboard are the tenting legs and the wrist support. I typically keep each piece of the keyboard separated by a couple feet on my desk. And this allows me to work with a really open chest and a good posture. I can also use the space in between for a notepad or I'll put my coffee or water here. This is in contrast to a typical keyboard, which forces your chest to close up as your shoulders get closer together and your hands have to come like this. Which brings me to my next point, the thumbs. With this keyboard, your thumbs can do a whole lot of stuff. With a typical keyboard, I found I just used my thumb to press the space bar. So with this keyboard, I use my thumbs a lot. If you've really never heard of the Moonlander before, then this might be blowing your mind a little bit. I've been using mine for a year and a half now. And even though I loved it from the start, I found it really hard to learn and it hurt my productivity for a while. But once I got used to it, my productivity has at least leveled off and I'd like to think it got better. I'm gonna show you the keyboard setup that I purchased along with the switch type. I'll talk about some early difficulties that I encountered using this keyboard and some things that I've come to love most about it after using it for the last year and a half. I'll show you what my key configuration looks like which is highly influenced by Vim, my favorite code editor, but also something that I've highly customized to give me a smooth working experience and highly productive setup on Mac OS. Here's the Moonlander purchase page. I thought that the black one would be better for not getting dirty, but actually the white one that I ended up buying didn't really get that dirty in the year and a half that I've had it. The reason I went with the white one was because I thought it looked cooler and the colors of the LEDs under the key switches would show up better. I chose printed keycaps. Lastly, for the most interesting selection, which was the key switches. And this is what really hung me up for about a week as I was deciding what to order. And I wanted to test all of these. I ended up getting the kale black box linear switches. These ones are really nice for me because they are not too clicky, but then they have a fair amount of pressure and like pushback. So I can easily tell like I'm pushing down on them. The more research I did about these switches, the more I wanted a linear switch and I wasn't intimidated to get one that had uh, required a lot of force to press on it. In fact, when I was doing my switch research, I ended up going on Amazon and buying something like this, where you can test out a whole bunch of switches. If you're gonna do that, you'll not only need to buy these switches, but you'll need to probably make sure you have a board like this one so that you can plug the switches in and click them and test them and uh, see how they feel. This is the theme that I use most often, so it has this kind of band around the outside and then all the keys on the inside are a different color and this is really nice for me but you can go ahead and switch them like this and I'm just gonna run through a bunch of different options you can see some examples there are tons of different colors you can pick for this thing you can see what I'm doing is I'm sort of like hopping through this layer in order to switch them. So this one switches me to a different layer and you, you can see all these like colors appear. And then this button here switches the color scheme and then I'm just like hopping back. So this is like what I would want to do if I wanted to change the colors. I would, I would have to go like doing this. Now I don't really ever change the colors. So that, that's why I have them kind of hidden on this other screen. So now let's talk about my special layer, which I call the adjunct. And that's what happens when I press down with my thumb on this button here. And you can see that the whole color of my keyboard changes to reflect this new layout. And none of these keys mean what they appear to mean anymore. So when I press down with my left thumb, this adjunct layer activates and you can see on the right hand side the color codings which help guide me as to what these keys actually mean now. And on the left side I'm just putting a quick visual of what they're actually mapping to. Let's also take a look at the left side. I press this button down and now we have all sorts of special keys available like these three under my index finger 
and as well lots of things I can do over here. If you want to learn more about my keyboard layout and see how I use this for a great productivity setup on Mac OS and an awesome coding experience inside of Vim, you can check out the video in the link description below. This is the true joy of using this is that you can create whatever you want and people have created a lot. So let me show you some other layouts that people have made. There's tons of crazy shit in here. If you see anything with Colmac, uh, you know you're in trouble with that guy because um, the keys are not in the QWERTY setup. They're in this Colmac setup. And um, if you can learn how to use this, I mean, you're pretty much a legend in my book. Another way of setting up your keys is Dvorak. Let's see what that looks like. You can see there's an O here, there's an E here. Everything's all messed up. Although I love this keyboard, I would also say that it's a labor of love. There's a lot that's difficult about this keyboard to learn and continues to be difficult. The first thing that I was shocked was so hard was the ortholinear layout. I really wasn't used to typing with the buttons directly above each other, and some of the ways that I'd use the keyboard became extremely awkward. One example is the CD command for change directory. Usually I would use my ring finger and my middle finger to really quickly bang that out because they weren't right above each other. But in the ortholinear layout, the C button is directly under the D button. So now I had to use my middle finger to press both of them. And it actually it now takes me longer to press CD. But I got used to that in a month or two and I don't even notice it anymore. Another difficulty is that the default layout is quite bad. I think I'm not alone in saying that the default Moonlander configuration is not what you should be using. I have a buddy who did stick with the default one and he seemed pretty happy and figured it out a lot quicker than I did. So maybe I'm wrong about that. This leads me into my next point about making changes to the layout. I've made 154 revisions to this layout. Last year in 2023, I only made a handful, say one or two every month. But in 2022, when I got this keyboard, I made a lot. Every time I made a change to a layout configuration, it would set me back a little bit, where I had to get used to the new buttons that I assigned where. My recommendation to you would be to make a lot of these changes really quickly and then try and lock in something that you don't change for a while. That way you can start being more productive quicker than I did. I was not very productive on this keyboard for a while and I had to use a different keyboard for work so that I could get shit done. And then I would use this later to learn it or just one in a while. Even now I make a lot of mistakes on this keyboard. So after a year, I can say that I am fairly proficient, but I still have a long way to go, which makes sense because I was using a regular keyboard for like 20 years and I, I've only been using this one for one. So as the years go on, I just expect to get better and better and be making less mistakes and getting even faster. Which brings me into the benefits of this keyboard. It's super ergonomic. I've showed you how it expands my chest and lets me keep my arms far apart, which I totally love. I also feel like I write code and work a lot faster on this, as well being able to change windows and keep my hand on the mouse while I sort of pop windows open and work around this way and change windows like this. I love doing all this stuff. I love this keyboard. It's extremely fun. It's cool. It has cool color schemes that I can add, which is dope. And I love that it's only gonna get better and better as I get more used to it. For my closing remarks, I will say two things things. One, I was really worried that this keyboard would break regular keyboards for me, and it hasn't done that. There's a few things that I find strange on a regular keyboard now that I'm used to this. I certainly haven't got any faster or better at using a regular keyboard, but like I said, after 20 years of practice, it's not like I'm going to forget that anytime soon. And lastly, there's a huge benefit that comes from doing hard things. I didn't need to learn this keyboard for my job or to show off to somebody or for recognition. When we do really hard things like learn a new language or learn how to play a song on the piano or the guitar or learn some bizarre keyboard and customize its layouts to our exact preferences, something amazing happens inside of us. I feel like these things expand our mind and strengthen our sense of self and ultimately self-love. 
I could probably rant on this for a while, but I'm just gonna cut it there and leave you with that. It was great to share my experience with my Moonlander keyboard, but I wanna hear about your experience. Let me know in the comments below how you like it. What do you love most about it and what bothers you? And I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and consider subscribing. As a new channel, this really helps me get some visibility on my videos. I've made another video on my Moonlander, which talks about how I use it to have a great productivity setup on Mac OS and also how I use it to have a great coding experience in the Vim editor and how I can bring that Vim experience outside of Vim into other applications. So I've put a link to that video here and I would be honored if you checked it out and stepped a bit further into my world. Otherwise, it's been great hanging out with you. Thank you so much for watching this and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, cool. That's good. Now let's record the next one. This is gonna, I need an intro to that video, right? Okay.